Hello everybody, I'm Mr. Zorn and this is the Intermolecular Forces Lab. In this lab, we're going to look at four substances and we are essentially going to rank the intermolecular forces. Uh, we're going to do a couple different tests to help us identify which of the four substances is the strongest and the weakest um, in terms of intermolecular forces. First thing we need to do is we need to plug in our hot plate and get that going because that's going to be one of the first things we use and we need it to be hot. Okay. Other things that we're going to need for this lab activity are some pipettes, uh, some aluminum foil. We're going to make a boat similar to what we did in one of our previous labs. Uh, I've got some pennies, test tubes, and that's about it. Uh, it's a relatively simple lab, straightforward, so let's get to it. So the first thing we're going to do is we are going to go ahead and test the boiling point of our four substances. So what I've done is I have taken a piece of aluminum foil and I made a boat similar to what we did last time. Uh, I've cut it into four quadrants and then I've numbered the four quadrants. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and put a couple drops of each unknown on uh, in each in each quadrant here. So let's go ahead and do that. So just need a couple drops here. Let's do five. Three, four, five. And then what's going to happen is I'm going to take this aluminum boat, I'm going to stick it on the hot plate, and we are going to watch the order uh, that these evaporate in. So we're going to find the one that evaporates the quickest, and then we're going to find the one that evaporates the longest, and then kind of rank them according to their evaporation rates. As I was getting set up, I noticed that number two and number three have already evaporated before I've even put them on the hot plate. So I'm going to add a couple more drops of each, and then we're going to get this going. So I still have drops of one and four on my foil here. So that should tell you something already about the evaporation point. And here we go. So two's gone. So two evaporated first, then three. Looks like number one is uh, still hanging on there. Uh, four hasn't done much. So four is the only one left at this point. So again, the order that they evaporated were two, three, one, four. Two, three, one, four. And that smells fantastic. Let's move on to the next test. Okay, for our next test, we are going to test surface tension. We're going to be using a penny and a uh, pipette here. And we're going to count how many drops will fit onto the penny before it spills over. Okay, so the water droplets are kind of held together and when they just can't hold on anymore, when the forces weaken, they start to spill over. Okay, so let's count how many drops we can get on our penny here. This is kind of like a game. So I'm going to fill up my dropper and then I'm going to count. Okay, so this is our first unknown. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty one. 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, still going, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, ah, 49, okay? You can see that the water has spilled off on the penny, okay? So we're gonna repeat the process with the other unknowns that we have 
And uh, again, keep track of how many drops you can fit on the penny. All right, so for our next test, we are gonna check solubility in both water and vegetable oil. So I have a test tube here. I'm gonna add a couple drops of each unknown. Um, we're gonna look and see if it mixes together or if we end up with layers. If it has layers, obviously it's insoluble. So let me take my first unknown here and I'm gonna add a couple drops. and we're looking for it to mix, which it certainly looks like it is. Yep, I don't see any different layers here. Looks like it has combined, all right? Let me put a clean test tube in. All right, here is our third unknown. Now, if you notice, after I started to squirt everything in, it looks like it's starting to rise to the top. So you can definitely see a difference in layers here between the top and the distilled water. So I would say this is insoluble. All right, let's move on to our next one. So I'm going to add a couple drops of our next unknown. I'm actually going to give this a little bit of a shake here. All right, looks fairly consistent through here. So to me, it looks like everything in this case has dissolved. All right, and this is our fourth unknown. I don't see any different layers here. It looks like it has combined, all right? Let me put a clean test tube in. All right, we're gonna move on to vegetable oil. So I have a test tube filled with oil, and same thing as before. I'm gonna add uh, some of the unknown, and we're gonna see, we're gonna look for layers. So, Definitely see some bubbles. So the unknown that I squirted into the vegetable oil is kind of sinking down to the bottom here. And it definitely looks like they are not mixing. So I would say this first sample is insoluble in vegetable oil. All right, here's our final unknown. So I added some of the unknown and it looks like it is completely mixing with the vegetable oil. Okay, don't see any separation in the layers here. All right, unknown number two. So definitely seeing some layers going on here. You can see the vegetable oil here, and then you can definitely see a separation here. So there's a different layer up here on top. So in this case, sample number two is insoluble in vegetable oil. All right, here's our next unknown. So just like with the other uh, unknowns so far, can definitely see that we've got an oil layer here and then we have a layer of the unknown up on top. So again, insoluble in vegetable oil. And that's it. 
Now, what I'd like you to do is take the data from the lab, figure out which substance matches up in terms of IMF. So I want you to identify the unknowns based on the strength of the intermolecular forces. Good luck and have fun.